Hey everybody out there, my name is Dragnix and this is Poncho. It released on the PS4 today as well as the PC, Mac, and Linux. But before I begin diving into this puzzle platformer, you guys should know that this key was obtained for the developer for the purposes of review. Now that won't affect my opinions in any way, but you guys should know that because of FTC guidelines as well as the whole morals thing, you know? I am playing the Steam version, and this is developed by Delve Interactive. This is their first game on Steam, and I don't see any other history for them, so we'll just get right into it. You play as the title character Poncho, which is basically a robot with a poncho. I mean, you can't get more simple character development than that. Now, in terms of the actual character himself, there's not a lot known about him. You know he was created, and as to the backdrop of the world, you don't know exactly what's going on. You know the world has ended, you know that, you know, you're basically trying to find out what's going on. And that's what gives you the reason to explore this world, to figure out exactly what happened, see if there are survivors, see exactly who you can find and what you can do. Now the game does make a good first opening impression. The fact of the matter is this opening sequence does a very good job of introducing the art aesthetic as well as the presentation that you will love about this game. It's the strongest element about Poncho. Now we've seen pixel platformers before, but I think what sets this one apart is the unique 2D and 3D aspect that the game presents, which is has similarities to Paper Mario of past, but in particular the way things, you know, construct themselves in the background as they come into, you know, focus. I think that's where the game really shines. It feels different. It feels something that you have not played before. And while there may be similar mechanics from other games, it does do it in a way that it repackages it so it feels fresh. I really like the art style here too, in particular Poncho. The animation quality is crisp, and frankly movement feels generally just good at this point. There aren't any frame rate drops from what I've seen, it performs rather well. Now the unique gameplay element here is the sort of 2D, 3D element as I mentioned before. You have a foreground, a background, and what I would call a back background that you can jump in between. So if you get into a hazard where you know you can't move in that foreground, you will have to jump to the background to maybe get around it. Now. This also adds other elements to mess with you during it. There are time platforms that move between those foreground and backgrounds over and over again, and you'll have to time your jumps or even jump with it as it moves into the next foreground or background in question. Yes, I'm gonna say foreground and background a lot because that's the main mechanic of this game. Now you also have platforms that will actually react to you going between the foreground and background, and that can cause a little bit of an issue. The problem is, is that it's not always clear on where it's going in terms of your reaction and that does pose a little bit of a problem maybe an up arrow or a down arrow sort of like what you've seen in older NES games showing you which way it's moving if you do react to it does seem like something that the game really should have put into place. Now it does seem to react based on whether or not you jump into the background or the foreground, however it's really hard to tell at times, and especially when it's going to stay in place, because sometimes it'll stay in place no matter what you do, and that's really confusing at times. It'll take you a while to get your head around that. Now at the core, this works rather well. It does lead to some interesting puzzles, and in particular with the collection mechanics. You will find keys and gems along the way, as well as robots that you'll have to reactivate in order to you know, progress along at this point. Now, there's a lot of the maps you can explore, and there's a lot of almost hidden areas where if you jump in a certain way, you'll be able to get to them. The exploration does work in that sense. The fact is, is that I can find new ways to move around the map, and I I do like the particular, the fact that I can actually get around certain doors that need keys with that mechanic. Now, I believe this was purposeful. The fact is, is that you can buy keys and find them in the map, and they'll make your job easier, but they're not necessarily required at times. There are certain ones where you can jump over them if you're able to get the timing right, which I really do appreciate. It does give a sense of challenge, as well as reward people who are able to use the mechanic rather well. The base controls are good. Good. I'll get into some problems with it in a little bit, but the base controls do work with this and basically at the core the experience is good. There's a reason why I'm saying the core though. 
You see, at the core, the game is good, but the bigger problem here is what complements it, and in particular, certain mechanics in the game that will cause you frustration. Let's talk about the checkpoint system. So, in general, in terms of platforming games, you do have a checkpoint system, and Poncho is no exception. The problem here is, is that when the checkpoint system gets activated, and when it doesn't. Now, if you fall, you'll most likely be spawned very close to where you fell at that point. Now, that will depend on how long you were on the platform in question, as well as, you know, whether or not you dropped onto a different platform in question. So it, it does lead to this weird situation where you don't necessarily always know where you're going to spawn next. I really do think the game would have been better if there were, you know, strict checkpoints in question, because there are times you can spawn into a um, object in question, which is problematic, and you, you know, die, die, die. After a certain amount of failures, it seems to move you back to a prior checkpoint, which can actually be even worse at times, because it can actually lose you a lot of progress. And losing a lot of progress is something that you're gonna have to get used to in this game. All right, so in this section, I'm trying to get up this tower. Basically, I want to see the elder at the to top of the tower at this point, and so I need to use these platforms and go into the foreground and background to be able to use those, you know, girders in order to, you know, get further and further. And then you'll see the problem right here. Because I missed that jump specifically, or I didn't time it right, I fell all the way down to the, basically the start of the map. Now, the checkpoint system saved it as you see there, so I kept on trying to kill myself to maybe get into an older checkpoint, but that's not the case. So now I have to start all over again, and unfortunately, there's three or four platforming sections that I now have to go through to get back to that one point. And unfortunately for the game, that causes a major problem. In terms of those sort of difficult jumps, you would hope that the game would do some, you know, learning mechanics in terms of, okay, you missed that jump here, try it again, you know, trying to get adjusted to the jump. But because it takes so long to get back to that other point, you've almost forgotten exactly what you need to do. This is also compounded by the fact that you not, don't necessarily know exactly where to go at times. There are no arrows in this map, and it is sort of an exploration type game, but unfortunately this does cause a problem when it's unclear where to go, especially in that girder section. I don't know where to go here. I don't know exactly how to get up this portion. I figured, okay, maybe use that little opening in the sort of stone columns there, but unfortunately I'm not able to use that in the way that I'm thinking I need to use that. And it comes down to so precise timing with the platforms, which all have variable time, by the way. This isn't something that you'll get adjusted to. Some platforms move fast, other platforms move, you know, slow. So you won't get adjusted to how quickly or unquickly the game will push those platforms from you. This causes, again, bad expectations on the player. They can't rely on past knowledge and what they've learned. They've got to adjust on the fly. This does cause a major problem for the game. Now, some people may say, okay, what about the days of NES Hard or anything like that? It seems like games where it start you almost at the start of the level with one mistake. You know, yes, you could view it in that way where Poncho is a game that punishes you hard for all the mistakes you made, but it's inconsistent in that as well. Sometimes you will actually be able to save relatively in a spot where you didn't think was gonna you know, happen at that point, and it's really unnecessary. I don't see a lot of puzzle platformers in those old days. It was more so precision platforming. This is more of a puzzle platformer. It's trying to figure your way through the level in question. And to add the difficulty to it because of that, you know, punishing element, I just don't see the point. And unfortunately, it causes a huge frustration factor. Again, I can't get that through enough. The frustration factor in this game is high. and. Unfortunately, that only introduces itself about an hour, an hour and a half in. The first couple of levels, you will get a little bit, you know, annoyed at times, but it's more so, you know, the mistakes aren't necessarily easy mistakes to make. Um, you almost have to go out of your way to try to, you know, kill yourself in a way to reset your progress because the levels are more horizontal. I started seeing these vertical segments in, the, in this portion, and even at this point, this one level that I'm showing you right here, I have still not got through, and I've been about two hours at it at this point, just because of the precision needed at this point. That's a problem, and at least in my eyes. Now, again, this is personal in terms of opinion, but I do think the game's design did not warrant this.
And some of the game design elements, unfortunately, rear their ugly head in that. Sometimes it's really hard to understand what's in the foreground, what's in the background, and what's in the back background. I'm showing you this segment here to understand that. You almost would think that this foreground element would be easily to jump to, but in fact, I can't. It's actually two in the foreground at that point. It is something that's unique to this game, and I can't give it necessarily a negative point because of it, but it does cause a lot of frustration, and in particular, again, with the checkpoint mechanic, as well as the restarting mechanic, it will drive you nuts, especially when you think you've got it, and all of a sudden you're falling to your doom. Now this is also further amplified by the timing mechanics. Now as I mentioned before, platforms will move in and out of the foreground and backgrounds at specific times, to the point where you have platform sections that you will actually have them at different intervals. Now this actually causes a problem in terms of pacing a gameplay. Sometimes you'll have to wait 10 seconds for it to line up in the right area. Not in a lot of games have I seen that long of a segment. You almost have to take a little siesta in order to wait for it to actually let line up the way that you need it to. Now, this is again compounded by the checkpoint system as well as the falling mechanics in which you may have to get to that section, fail it, have to go through a whole nother section of things, and then try to remember, wait, what was the timing on this? What exactly was going on? And then if you fail again, all you're doing is just getting the player from frustrated more and more. And unfortunately for me, that again caused major problems to the point where I wanted to sit back, I stopped the game, I almost said, okay, I got enough to do this review. Then I'm like, no, I need to give this review more time. So I went back again and ran into the same issues. This game is a frustrator. Now, that's where I think my conclusion on Poncho is going to come, because unfortunately for me, this game is all the wrong types of frustration all combined into one, creating a game experience that was not fun for me at the extraneous levels. In particular, the one level that, as I mentioned before, caused me so much frustration that I just wanted to quit the game. Now, again, it's the frustration mechanics that enhance each other that's the major problem here. If some of those were fixed, then it could create an experience that I would want to go back to. And the base gameplay is good. Again, the base puzzling is an interesting idea. And for the game itself, compared to other pixel platformers out there, it does stand out. I've always talked about on the channel a game that needs to stand out compared to its brother in, and Pancho does that. Even though we've seen 2D3 mechanics like this before, I felt like it did it uniquely. The combination of the time platforms with the, t with the foreground and background, adding an additional background there, even though that caused problems, this game felt different. This game felt different compared to everything else. And if you have a high frustration tolerance, this game can reward you. It does have some interesting story elements where it's like you find robots, you repair them, you and you find a little bit about the world over and over again with like mask guys and things like that. Now, again, I'm going to say that this is a difficult puzzle platformer. You have to have a high tolerance frustration level and the aesthetic and charm will work for you. But overall, I would pass on it myself. But again, if you see like what you see in terms of the gameplay and you like what you see in terms of the information presented, then pick it up. Even though it's 15 bucks, I do think that the experience may be well worth it for people. All right, this is Dragon Nick signing out. I hope you got an idea of exactly what Poncho has to offer. I will leave my Steam review in the description below. And again, always comment, see what you like about the videos and what you don't like. I always take feedback and I will see you all later. Peace out.